States who have provided outstanding leadership. Joe is going to present the 2005 Clifford Beers Award. So 
with with great pleasure that I present the 2005 Slippery Beers Award to Pat Houston.
the other level, high functioning, you know, that's almost as good as us. The other would be a longer term, more elementary program for the hopeless, hopeless cases. They were going to be designated low functioning, and I fell into that latter category. I once stood up and challenged the staff, and after I did, I was henceforth known as treatment resistant, non compliant, and low functioning. One friend from the program had a drinking problem, and he was also on some pretty heavy duty neuroleptics. So, with the influence of myself and others in the program, we urged him, you got to give up one or the other. And he did. He decided to stop drinking. Stan had their own impression of this friend, Mark. Mark was bored with day treatment, and he'd sit in the back of the room like this. Just absolutely stoic. And he never said a word. His expression never changed. His arms folded across his chest. He got labeled low-functioning also. But Mark was very animated and alive amongst us mental patients. He'd come in every day and say, oh man, I made it another day without a beer. Yeah. All right, Mark. He was especially eager on Monday to let us know that he'd gotten through the whole weekend without a single drink. And we were proud of Mark. We saw his great sense of humor and his enthusiasm for life. Staff, on the other hand, saw a Mark that didn't change. All they saw was that same old person sitting in the back of the room with his arms folded across his chest. Then I went to therapy that week and I saw my therapist and she told me about this brand new program created by Paul Sherman for consumers to learn to be case managers and go to work for the mental health system. First program of its type in the world. What a concept back then. Consumers providing services. She asked if I was interested and I said, hell yeah. <laughs> I got out of that day treatment program and I never wanted to look back. Huh, labeled me low functioning, I'll show <laughs> Well, toward the end of the training program, I got a call, and they told me that my friend Mark was dead. And I said, What well, happened? Yeah. Seeing that Mark got despondent about being placed in the low functioning group, and he started to drink again. He got more and more desperate. He went to the staff and asked them for help. He begged them to intervene. They just sort of chuckled at Mark. They hadn't seen him get better. They hadn't seen him get worse when he returned to drinking. They hadn't seen any change from the guy who sat in the back of the room with his arms folded across his chest. They missed it. Mark tried desperately to get a hold of me in his final week of life. He felt that because I once stood up to staff, that I could make them listen to his pleas for help. In one final act of desperation, he went home, down to 12 pack, and pulled the trigger, ending his life and his pain. I was devastated, i got to tell you, and I was so consumed with anger at those staff people, I wanted to grab them all by the throats and just shake some sense into them and say, what are you doing to us? But with time, my anger changed. And I felt angry at the other clients. Why weren't they there helping Mark? And then it dawned on me, where was Mark's voice? Why couldn't he be heard? Why can't we help people have and find their own voice? <coughs> it became clear to me that I had to help clients find their own voice. And from that day until today, my motto has been, no more marks. I fight as an activist to shake mental patients out of their complacency and speak with their own voice. I fight as an advocate and an activist to shake mental health professionals out of their complacency to know that we have a right to end, that, that we have a right and we must speak and we must be heard. No more marks. I fight as an advocate and an activist to shake family, friends, and others out of their complacency and to let them know that whatever their interest in us or the public mental health system, our interest is even stronger because for us it's often our very lives that are at stake. No more marks. I've met, spoken with 
literally thousands of people over the years. And the thing that keeps me going, despite the five heart attacks, is that I'd rather someone pick up a telephone, give a call, than pick up a gun and pull a trigger. It's a real simple bottom line for me. No more marks. The you know, I, I don't I don't want to like take you down with the sad story. So I've got a little balance. A few years later, I was working with a federal grant where we were providing seed money for people to own and operate their own businesses. You know, there are still many places where they think of consumers working and they think of jobs in food and filth. McDonald's are janitorial. Not that there's anything wrong with a McDonald's job, but it's... Anyway, we traveled around the state and we gave training in how to write a business plan. And then we got these, these applications in, these business plans for people, and then we provide seed money. Well, we got this one business plan in, and it was the best business plan we had ever seen. And it was to grow herbs in the desert southwest. <laughs> and we thought, uh-huh. We know what kind of herb thing we going down there in the desert. We're going to be doing some good ganja down there. But he wrote a dynamite business plan. <laughs> we had to fund him. So we funded this guy. Mental patient, right? A little self-medication, you know. But uh, we funded him. A few years later, he sold his little herb farm for several million dollars to a little company called Celestial Seasonings. <laughs> Think of the contrast, a day treatment program that labels people low functioning versus a program for helping people own and operate their own businesses. We have to have the vision of the latter. We have to have the vision that everything is possible. Recovery is described as a spiritual journey, and I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about that thing we call the human spirit. It's that thing that drove Beethoven to write beautiful music, though his deaf ears would never hear a single note. It's that thing that helped people to survive in concentration camps. And it's that thing that elevates us back from being mental patients to reclaim our franchise as part of the human race. Years ago, a family member organization that I won't name, now me, <laughs> was real fond of not including consumers. I got on the state board of directors by reminding them all that consumers are family. We are family. We just happen to be the one with the diagnosis. When Mayor Pena one of the first Hispanic leaders of a major United States city was appointing the first board of directors for the Unified City and County of Denver Mental Health Organization. I applied, and in the application I reminded him that to not include consumers would be akin to appointing an affirmative action board of all white males. I don't play it fair. I will and have marched with women for women's rights, but when it comes time, for someone to step up to the podium and take the mic, it had better be a woman. I will and have marched with African Americans for civil rights, but when it comes time for someone to step up to the podium and take the mic, it had better be someone with skin a whole lot darker than mine. I will and have marched with people in wheelchairs, but when it comes time for someone to speak to the experiences of being mobility impaired, it had best be someone in a wheelchair. I will and have marched with people who are gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, questioning, and HIV positive. But when it comes time for someone to step up to the mic and speak out, it had better be someone who lives with those issues. It's funny that we're only now finding our own voice. When Dan Fisher, another beer spinner, got appointed to the President's New Freedom Commission a few years ago, everyone on the email list where this was announced was all excited, saying how wonderful it is that we've finally gotten a seat at the table. I responded, it's about damn time, it's our table. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you all for 
marching side by side with me and others like me. Thank you for providing your support and understanding. And thank you for letting me be that someone who stepped up to the podium tonight and took the microphone. Love and peace to you all. Oh.